A genius man gained the public's attention because of his multiple prison escapes. He was nicknamed as the King Kong Artist. On the contrary of the previous prison escapees episodes from our channel, the man we are going to talk about in today's video had never committed a murder. His ways were so different. He was specialized in defrauding and deceiving as well as escaping the prison. Without further ado, let's start our exciting episode. Before we start, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications. Stephen J. Russell, a fraud man known as the King Kong artist and famous because of his multiple successful escapes from several prisons. He was born on September 14, 1957, in North Carolina, Elizabeth City. Stephen's biological parents were in an illegitimate relationship. As a result, they didn't want to raise a child out of wedlock, so that the child was adopted by a family who ran a large food produce company. But it wasn't until he was 9 years old when he discovered that he was adopted. Later, after a period of time, he figured out that his real parents remarried again and had a few children. However, they didn't think about taking their first kid back or even get in touch with him. This trauma pushed the poor kid to behave in such an extreme way from getting into problems with others and engaging in various troubles. As a minor, he would later state, I felt rejected. I had a little bit of problem when I found out. Stephen's foster parents attempted to stop his extreme behaviors, such as fighting and engaging in troubles. But it never worked out. So they decided to send him to boys' home, where he would later state that he experienced homosexuality. But this didn't stop him from falling in love with a woman, whom he would later marry. The couple had a baby girl named Stephanie, when Stephen was working as a volunteer deputy police officer. But unfortunately, the marriage didn't get along. The couple decided to separate. In 1985, Stephen would face another trauma, when his foster father passed away. This triggered him so deeply, thinking about his real parents who deserted him and also thinking about his miserable life. After overcoming this trauma, Stephen would get a job in a food company to earn an honest living. But unfortunately, it didn't last long, because he was fired. And he would later state, When I lost my job, that really screwed with my head. I lost control of my life. This was the beginning of the anger toward society, and the system which helped in creating one of the most genius King Kong artists. After getting fired, Stephen decided to use his intelligence in defrauding. He, at the first time, started selling fake Rolex watches and later frauded an insurance company out of $45,000 by pretending to have hurt himself. He kept defrauding and deceiving until he was arrested in 1992 and was convicted for submitting a false passport application and insurance fraud. As a result, he was sentenced to 10 years in Harris County Prison. During his imprisonment, Stephen's thoughts were about James Kempel, who he had been dating at that time and was tested positive for HIV. This was the motive which pushed Stephen to think about his first escape. He used to observe the guard's pattern routine and eventually he was able to conclude the planning escape. He managed to get a pair of sweatpants and a t-shirt from a storage room in the prison. He also managed to get a radio, the one as the guards have. After one month in the prison, Stephen's right time to escape came, when the guards were on their usual smoke break. He put on the civilian clothes he had found and walked right to the door and tapped on the window of the guard to open the door. Then he walked out of the prison as a free man. You might be thinking about how the door guard allowed him to get out. Well, the prison was sometimes visited by undercover police officers who wore civilian clothes the thing that facilitated Stephen's escape. After escaping the prison, Stephen headed to Mexico with James Kempel, but he didn't make it too long, because he had to go back to the United States as Kempel got really sick and had to get proper treatment. Unfortunately, 
Two years later, he was arrested after attempting to commit insurance fraud and was convicted for prison escape and fraud. During his first week of imprisonment, James Campbell passed away. This time, Stephen decided not to escape, so that after a period of time, he was paroled and got a stable job in a grocery store. But Stephen felt like he deserved a better life, which means a big fraudulent deal. The Wright's golden opportunity came when he saw an announcement about a job offer. Stephen, with no hesitation, applied for the job as a CFO of a massive medical management company called NAM. As the genius Stephen falsified his qualifications and documents and read some books about financial management in order to acquire some knowledge about the job, he was hired and embezzled around $800,000 despite he had no experience in such job. You might be thinking about why Stephen frauded the company which provided him with a high salary. Well, according to him, he revenged for Kempel because of the way he had been treated by similar companies when he sought treatment for HIV. After stealing the money, within 5 months, Stephen was arrested and his bail was set as $900,000. But geniusly, he managed to call Harris County clerk from the prison and impersonated the judge's voice. Then he was able to convince the clerk in lowering the bail to $45,000. The next day, Stephen paid his bail and walked out as a free man. A few days later, Harris County's authorities figured out Stephen's trick. They tracked his phone calls when he called his friend asking for money. And then he was arrested in a hotel room in West Palm Beach, Florida. Stephen was sentenced to 45 years in prison for the NAM fraud and was sent to the maximum security SL unit in Huntsville, Texas. As usual, Stephen kept observing everything inside the prison as well as the routine. At one point, he came up with the idea of his next escape. He noticed that the prisoner's uniform are the same as the doctors who regularly visit the prison, except the color, so that he managed to collect green highlighter markers and a spare prison uniform. Then he dyed it in green, so as to look like the doctor's scrubs. On the 13th of December 1996, Stephen once again approached the door and waved to the guard who was on the phone to open the door. The guard ended up opening and letting him out without any suspicions. Then he walked out of the prison as a free man again. While helicopters and search teams were looking for him, Stephen managed to get a ride out of the town into Houston. But after a period of time, he was tracked down and was arrested in Mississippi by the US Marshal and was sent back to a maximum security prison in Texas. At that time, Stephen came up with a mind-blowing escape idea. He informed the authorities that he was tested positive for HIV and faked a medical record by using a typewriter inside the prison. During his imprisonment, the guards noticed that he was changed. His body was showing the symptoms of the late stages of dying, and death seemed close, so that he was granted to move to a nursing prison home. While in there, the prison officers received a call from a physician who said that Stephen had been selected for an experimental treatment. So he was paroled. After a period of time, the president received a death certificate stating that Stephen Russell had died. Stephen would later state about this escape, that was the most difficult. I had to completely discipline myself. You do whatever you have to do. I get my ideas from studying. I watch. I look for weaknesses. You look the whole way around something, and you never let yourself get blocked. I don't think I'm cleverer than the police, but I managed it because they think anyone who is a criminal is stupid, and they are complacent. I think anyone can escape from anywhere. Unfortunately, Stephen made a big mistake when he attempted to get a $75,000 loan from Nations Bank in Dallas, while the bank became suspicious about him. The bank called the police, but Stephen as usual feigned a heart attack and was transported to a hospital, where he was placed on security watch. But as he did before, he used his intelligence and skills and impersonated an FBI agent and called the hospital using his cell phone to tell them he could be released. On April the 5th, 1998, Stephen was tracked down in Florida and was arrested for the embarrassment he had caused to the authorities. The judge sentenced him to 144 years in prison 45 years for his various scams and 99 years for his escapes. 
He is now incarcerated in TDCG Polanski unit in Texas, which is one of the most secure prisons in the world, where he spent 23 hours locked up in his own small cell. He was only allowed to leave his cell for one hour a day to shower or for a little exercise. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss more stories. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.